Hello everyone and welcome to episode 16 of Stratwatch. So here we go again, so I bring you another installment of the Stratwatch. We've been doing these since the start of the winter. We're coming to the end of the Stratwatches now. We'll probably keep them going for another week or two. Um, and uh, then if we do get like the big Royal Stratosphere in the, next, uh, in the next week or two, then we'll probably leave Strap Watch off after that. But it's been a very entertaining season. This is the first season of Strap Watches um, that we've done. So if you have enjoyed um, the, this season, season one of Strap Watch, then please let me know. And uh, no doubt we might bring it back for you uh, next winter. 2024-25. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We've still got a couple more strat watches, including this one, uh, to do. And uh, I'll be up to date with everything stratosphere wise, what's going on in terms of the temperature at 10 HPA over North Pole. And we'll look at forecast data as well. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. And I should talk you through episode 16 of Strat Watch in a moment. Just save that first video release. There's our 6 m UK weather forecast. And we're not live tonight. So I'm going to be um, doing the 10 to 14 day as a video upload. Off out for a bit of dinner tonight, actually. Guys, having my night off. <laughs> so uh, that's going to be, you know, fun. I'm uh, looking forward to that. So, uh, yes, if that's right for everybody, I'm going to take tonight off. Go and have a meal, and uh, we shall be uh, doing uh, today 10 to 14 days of video upload, and that will be appearing in an hour or so's time. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and all today's videos and content. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. I hope you having a lovely Wednesday. Okay, what am I doing with the camera? Right, here we go. We're going to turn off webcam and uh, crack on. We're going to start off with uh, this shot, which you know so well. This is from the JMA, the Black Line. Showing where we've been and where we currently are with temperature at 10 HPA of Jatia over North Pole versus the grey line, which of course is the train line. So temperature actually coming down a little bit at the moment at 10 HPA. We're hovering around minus 45, something like that. We are still above average though. We should be around minus 55 at the end of uh, February. So about 10 degrees above average. <coughs> Excuse me, but not as warm as we was uh, about a week or so back when we was up above minus 30 there. Of course, the worry of strategy so far this season uh, occurred at the beginning of January just there. That did send us a wind into burst for about a day. Um, if we go a little bit lower down to 30 HPA, uh, so hang on, let's go to there, right? If you go a little bit lower down to 30 HPA, you better can see warming is being sustained at that level. We are hovering close around minus 50 and have been doing so for a few days. We did pop up to about minus uh, 45 uh, about a week or so ago. I say hovering around minus 50. We're way above average as well. It should be around minus 65, something like that. So both levels of the actual stratosphere. We are above average with the temperature um, in the stratosphere. This is the latest uh, GFS forecast from Metro Seal for 10 HPA. The blue curve, of course, means the cold temperatures at their roots in the uh, stratosphere, warming at the moment on either side of the pole over Russia and also on the Canadian side. Now, warming is going to intensify over the next few days again. A renewed burst of warming happening through the opening days of March. This could well be the one that sends the zone wind into, re into reverse, causing a displacement event of polar vortex once again, squashing those blue cars out of the pole into North America, North Atlantic, and also northern parts of Europe. A um, little bit of split uh, there by the look of it as we get through around the 9th of March. So, yes, a, 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 a very brief split of the um, PB. And then another burst, yet another burst of warming happening, this time over sort of northern Europe. Um, heading into the middle part of, uh, of March. Such a bizarre season, this, with so many repeated warmings. Very, very strange season. Um, now, that would just reinforce probably the reversal of uh, zone wind. That's 10 HP. We can go over to next weather, though, and have a look at the temperature forecast for GFS for um, 30 HP, which, of course, is lower down. Closer to the Charles. So that's the current situation. We get the blue colours, cold temperatures at their roots in the stratosphere, which is on at 30 HPA, um, and uh, but the warming over the uh, over pole itself and into parts of Canada as well. Now, what do I do with this? So I don't use net weather very often. So let's just push through then. So uh, yeah, we we run through and uh, we get this renewed burst of warming. Uh, again, appearing over the pole into early March. Remember, it starts off at 10 HPA, but we do see a bit of evidence of it of, of it there 
um, also about 2nd of March at 30 HPA uh, as well. Um, and then beyond that, so uh, we run through the first week of March. And again, just race event of PB, the Blue Coast pushed out of the pole into Northern Europe, into uh, North, North Atlantic as well. And whatnot, just looking generally warmer than average at 30 HPA in the stratosphere over the polar region itself. Very significant uh, developments with this. And we come towards the end of the GFS run. Um, and the displacement event continues, but we do see signs of yet another renewed warming occurring over some of the parts of Europe there by the middle part of March as well. The, the PV, you know, the blue colours, well and truly kept in their box there, just really into the North Atlantic, looking very much stretched and weakened that you would typically expect. Though one way of looking at the polar vortex is in, or the stratospheric polar vortex, so it's the temperature. So let's just go back to it. So it's that. Uh, another way of looking at the uh, polar vortex is with the zonal wind. So, so um, the temperature really changes the position of the polar vortex, and the zonal wind changes the strength of the polar vortex. So, this is from weatheriscool.com. Of course, we see that the PV is uh, very close to long term averages now. So, it has lifted back up from the near reversal that we had about a week ago, but we didn't quite send the zonal wind into reverse. But it's powered back up again to be quite close to the long term average if we put in a GFS on site. As you see from this point, virtually from this point anyway, it's downheel all the way. You've got to get underneath this zero line. All GFS ensemble members are dear. They're going for a technical reversal of a zone of means and therefore a technical SSW. Some of them are going down to near record breaking levels down here. I think the majority cluster is through here. So a strong reversal of zone of means taking place through the first week, 10 days of March. Looking very, very likely there from the GEFS. 100% all ensemble members are going for that reversal. It's not only the GFS, it's at, but it's at, this is, it is also the ECM as well. So this is from University of Berlin. This is the um, temperature forecast for the stratosphere from uh, the ECMWF yesterday. Um, and we started off at 96 hours, which is the 1st of March there. Um, this would be important number down here, uh, 60 degrees north, uh, 6.1 ms. So sort of being still positive there. On the 1st of March, but we go to 168 hours. The zone wing is virtually into reverse then uh, to 60 degrees north, 10 HPA, just at uh, plus 0 0.1. And then 24 hours further on, 192 hours, then the zone of wind has gone solidly into reverse at 60 degrees north, 10 HPA. We've gone down to minus 6.0. And uh, that is reinforced at 216 hours, which is the 6th of March. We've gone down then to minus 10.6. And finally, we get through to uh, 240 hours, which is the 7th of March. And we've gone down to minus minus 14.2 so a strong reversal of zone wind being predicted here for 10 hp 60 degrees north from uh the ecm at the moment and uh, going a little bit low down to 30 hpa well at 168 hours again 4th of march we find that the zone wind is still positive plus 6.2 at 240 hours, it's still positive as well, at plus 3.0. But it's weakening. We could go on another day or two. We might well find that the zone of wind also reverses at 30 HPA as well as at 10 HPA. That's a bit speculative, so we'll wait a few more days to confirm that within those charts from University of Berlin. Extended uh, data from the ECM looking like uh, this. So this is the um, weekly mean temperature anomaly for 10 HPA. Uh, this is starting with week one, the 4th to the 11th of March. This deep red area, that is the warming of the stratosphere that we've been talking about here, for example. Um, so that is, basic, that is basically that. Um, right, okay, so week two is the 11th to the 18th of March. Warming sustained, perhaps being reinforced from the European side as well. Week three, the 18th to the 25th of March, the warming is still there, but it's reducing a little bit. Week four, 25th of March to the 1st of April, the warming gets a little bit weaker. And then the final week is week five, the 1st to the 8th of April. Then the warming is disappearing, actually cooling is taking place over on the 
um, Siberian side of the Arctic and the North Pole. Talk about power the bone of set back up into positive territory again for the end of March. This might not be the final warming. Um, that might happen a little bit later on into April, perhaps even early May. And then finally, we've got um, the uh, mean solar wind forecast for 10 HPA for the extended ECM. So, uh, again, this is the all important line just here, this zero line. If you go underneath that, the solar winds are in reverse. At the moment, the solar wind is very close to average. You see, again, it is quite downhill all the way, though. And as we go through the first week or so of March, solar winds solidly in reverse, strongly in reverse, then. And actually staying in reverse throughout most of March, believe it or not. So, again, let's just put in that. Uh, let's change the colour, actually. So let's change the colour to red and uh, highlight the zero line again. Um, no, it's not really until we get to the end of March, beginning of April, that we find the zero wind going very weakly positive uh, again there. But uh, through through most of March, actually, certainly until the last week or so, but anyway, the zero wind looks like it's uh, in reverse. So a very strong signal for a very strong major sort of stratospheric warming with reversal of the zone of wind and possible split of PV at all levels at uh, 10 HPA in particular but possibly at 30 HPA as well. It looks like the SSW of this season is on the way after so much messing around and you know constant minor warmings and displacement events it looks like the ssw is on the way next week and of course we will keep you posted in our 10 to 14 day videos as well as with episode 17 of strat watch which we will be of course releasing for you um same time same place on that gals it's next wednesday right if you enjoyed the video please like share subscribe and show everybody for doing that and we're going to be back a little bit later as i say with a video uh 10 to 14 day uh, today so i see you a little bit later on that one but for this one that's all for now and thanks for watching